and you can see it starts almost getting that bird's nest. The line, the line is real loose on there, okay? So whenever the bait hits the water, that tiger, oh, I got a bass! Of line on this reel, we just tested it, folks. And that was phenomenal. Oh, got him, got him, got him, come on. He's got a little fight, too. Welcome back, ladies and gents. We're sitting right outside of Academy today. We're going old school, we're going budget, we're going cheap. We're throwing it back with some pond fishing. We're stepping inside of Academy today. I'm gonna grab the cheapest bait casting combo off the shelf. I don't care what brand it is, or maybe if I find one that I feel like is a little bit better of a value for a few more bucks, I'll grab it and explain to you why I do, but we're gonna go fishing with it. We're gonna review these budget combos, why you would wanna start with something like this or why you might wanna spend more money down the road, but this is aimed at the newer fishermen. Uh, this is aimed at the, uh, the novices on the channel, the new subscribers, and I'm sure it's gonna be just a great day of fishing once we grab this combo for all of y'all advanced folks that follow us as well. So uh, something for everyone today because we are gonna take this out, we're gonna fish with it, we're gonna give any tips and tricks necessary I just got a few baits that I had brought with me we're keeping it simple I'm probably gonna throw a chatter bait maybe a worm or Texas rig and then maybe some top water to close things out so we're gonna talk a little bit about fishing line because I think we're probably gonna have to grab that as well for this combo unless it comes with line already and I'll talk about pros and cons of that as well because oftentimes it's cheap line on these things if they come pre-spooled many times if you buy line at the store they'll spool it up for you for free like Bass Pro Cabela's uh, places like that, right, where they got a big dedicated fishing section, Dick Sporting Goods. By the way, let me know where y'all would like to see the next budget bait caster combo or just budget fishing gear combo uh, store bought purchase from because maybe there's more stores around your area. So drop the comments and whatever's real popular, maybe we'll go grab a cheap combo from there next. In fact, we will. So let's step inside here. We're gonna take a look at the gear, grab something cheap, talk about the pros and cons, and get to fishing. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm seeing a lot of spinning gear, kids casters, looking for some bait casters, $130, so we're definitely not grabbing that. Favorite, $99.99, so we're not grabbing that either. So some things to look for, because this could get overwhelming if you're just walking into a store like this, a lot of options, right? Uh, primarily, like a seven foot plus rod is gonna be ideal. Now, I know we're limited with the budget, but seven foot is gonna be what we wanna see. Anything like six, six and below, kind of like, kid sizes or just really technique specific and you're not going to get as much casting distance not going to have as much power so i'm looking for something seven foot plus when it comes to the rod and other than that i mean can't be too picky so here's an h2 h2o express combo i believe this is like the walmart brand um so it's definitely going to be cheap and i, I might be wrong let me know h2o express so this rod right here is a six six so ideally we'd like to find something just a little bit longer. You don't see a price on it, and there's like no tag. I'm wondering if this was maybe like picked up and somebody brought it back in or something. A spin cast, spinnings, catfish gear. Here we go, some more bait casters. No price. How are you gonna buy this stuff without a price tag, man? This looks good. Made in China, probably a little cheaper, right? This is a Luz Laser Mag Speed Stick. I swear, I can't buy anything if they don't display prices. There's no prices displayed, so we're gonna have we got our work cut out for us, apparently. This might be what we need. Oh, it's 80 bucks. Seven foot. This would be perfect, but it's $80. Golly. All right, let's keep looking. 130 So I'm assuming this is cheap. It's an ugly stick with a Shakespeare on it. And um, I don't know, it just looks cheap. It's got line already, so that's a pro. But I don't see the price tag. Don't see the price tag anywhere. Then there's the speed spool here. This is a seven foot rod, so that's good. This is a 6.6. Six so not as gravy but then we come over here and this could be the one okay because this is an abu garcia max x i always remember that the black maxes were very cheap and affordable so i'm thinking maybe this is as well it might be like a newer iteration or something because that was always like a budget bait cast or budget combo you could find it for like 50 bucks so this might be the deal here but i'm gonna just continue the search real quick and see i'm not finding anything extremely cheap okay so there's no price tags on half of these but i'm taking three up to the counter Whichever one's the cheapest we're gonna get. So it's between the Luz, Abu Garcia, the H2O Express that actually comes with a couple frogs and braid pre-spooled. Just checked out, we got the green one, but wow, get this. So <laughs> that Abu Garcia Max X is uh, like 80 bucks. It's like uh, 89.99, okay? So I'm like, all right, fair enough. I liked that one, it was a seven footer. But then this Luz one was 99.99. I figured that was over here with some budget stuff. Absolutely not. And the funniest thing about it is the green H2O Express it's the beefiest rod, seven footer. It comes with baits and it's pre-spooled with line. And lastly, it was $55.99. So it was cheaper than displayed. So we walked out of here at like 60 bucks and 50 cents after tax. An absolute steal. We got the combo, let's hit the water. 
Is this for real? I walk outside. It's straight up raining. It's pouring right now. It's like a sun shower. I'm not in Florida. Hopefully this gets them fired up. Let's head to the pond. Hopefully this clears up. All right, so we ended up with the H2O Express combo. It comes with a couple frogs because it is considered a frog and setup, but for me, it's just kind of like considered all around. Seven foot, um, heavy, fast. We're gonna make this thing work for everything in the tackle box. Three, uh, three eighths to one ounce lures is what it's rated for. I would imagine this is like 20 pound braid. Actually, I was wrong. I didn't even look at the specs. It is pre-spooled with 100 yards of 40 pound braid, so I was wrong. That's actually pretty pretty strong there. Uh, four ball bearings, aluminum spool, we don't care about that. We want to cast it, we want to catch some fish and see if it actually works, right? Because there's a lot of marketing fluff with these bait casters, right? So we just want to know if it works or if it does not. EVA grips for comfort, so that's that EVA foam right here as opposed to, you know, cork or whatever on the high dollar stuff. I mean, the real seat, like, it tightens down and I don't want to over tighten it because you know on these cheaper combos I don't want to strip nothing and then my reel just fall off right so that's there uh, I like that it's got the little hook holder right your little bait keeper that's on top um, you know guides are guides on this thing they're probably nothing special I can promise you that but luckily as a cheap combo it hasn't fallen apart in shipping and there's not like an insert missing or anything um, if I kind of like get the rod tip and just kind of test the feedback here it, it feels a little flimsy for a frog dedicated rod I would like like an extra fast tip it's got a little bit of that give in the top. So it's gonna be more suited to like just about everything. Okay, so keeping it simple, here's a quick breakdown. We've got what came with the frog rod. We got pliers, okay? Dehooking fish, you always wanna have these. You never wanna like have to cut off a bait and leave those hooks in the fish because you didn't have pliers. Sometimes those fish like to choke the bait, okay? They really eat it. And that can be a big problem for the fish's health. We got the scale, okay? Got the scale case we catch a big one. Want to be able to weigh it for you. I've got some fishing line. I was going to put uh, fluorocarbon on whatever combo I bought, assuming it wasn't going to come with any. And then, of course, that came pre-spooled with braid. So we'll talk fishing line a little bit here, maybe. But, you know, if you're looking for something general, like all-purpose, fluorocarbon is, is a great place to start. Uh, monofilament is going to be the cheapest. And then braid uh, is typically uh, technique suited for, like, top water and stuff. But we'll talk about how that doesn't matter too much today. Um, some people would even, like, tie a knot from like the braid to this clear fluorocarbon line or monofilament line uh, just so that the fish maybe don't see it and you know maybe there's a couple other reasons but we're not gonna fiddle with all that today we're just gonna go straight braided line all the way to our bait and uh, so braid floats so that works good for the frogs because they stay on the surface okay but if you got baits that are like down on the bottom then maybe that's where it makes sense to go with like the fluorocarbon and, and a lot of baits are that way there's a lot of baits that are swimming in the middle or maybe they're down on the bottom and so you work them differently than the top water and that's why maybe fluorocarbon would shine and then it depends on what kind of stuff you're fishing to you know trees open water all that good stuff We're not gonna get into all of it today, but what comes with this combo is fantastic I've got a few of my favorite soft plastics in here, you know Just worms creature baits things of that nature and I've got some hooks and weights and then a couple chatter baits and some top water like a buzz bait So lastly these extendable clips these are like lifesavers right here So they just stay on the backpack if I need to cut off a lure tie something else on That's when these come into play and then of course I've got the backup rod So just in case like you know, maybe we break this or get Get some undeniable backlash at least we can finish out the evening strong and and that might conclude today's review but i doubt either of those is going to happen so let me figure out how to get this tape off here in fact i'm going to use these handy dandy snips and get right to work and then we're gonna um feed this line through and rig it up so yeah give me like 20 minutes because i'm not very talented there we go that took a couple hours got that undone release the spool spool release right that way we can get this line fed through here first thing you can't you cannot miss this. You got to go through this little eyelet on the reel, okay? Because if you miss this and you just go straight through the eyelets on the rod, what will happen is as you're reeling your baits back in, the line is just going to like go on the spool uneven. As you reel, that little thing goes from the right to the left side and you can see it evenly puts that line back on the spool, which is going to help you with future casts, not getting bird's nests. Just anyways, don't forget to go through that right there. Now, one thing about these cheaper combos is that oftentimes they're great to start. OK, it's kind of like what happens 90 days in? What happens six months in? How long is it going to last? And that's really where the expensive combos come into play. But this is fantastic for anyone getting started. I'm just going to assume, right? Assuming it doesn't break on its first day, that <laughs> this is what you want to go for. You're not going to go balling out, get you $100 reels, multi-$100 reels when you start. And if you do, good for you. 
too, but it's just, um, you know, over time you work your way up to that stuff. And they will last longer, uh, the reels. The rods, you know, you can snap those so many different ways between garage doors, car doors, ceiling fans. There's just a million different ways you can mess up a rod. And so I'm almost more cautious on spending money on, on rods. So check out the combo though, pretty sweet, 60 bucks. Before we get started, first impressions, all right? So the drag comes loose, right? So like the spool is closed and I'm still able to reel. That's like, I gotta crank this thing down. So from the factory, the drag comes loose on these cause it kind of can lower the longevity of the reel if it's just sitting on a shelf, I guess. But you know, after you get it, I always keep it pretty much cranked depending on what I'm throwing, right? So now that drag is nice and tight. So you can see as it came from the factory, it was like really loose and the line just comes right off the spool, right? So when you get a bite, that fish is just gonna take you and you won't even be able to reel it in because that drag is so loose. So you definitely gotta crank it down a little bit. So Wendy, I'm just gonna speak up. So what I'm gonna do is put these brakes on max. So I might not get as much casting distance, but that's fine when you're first learning. And I'm gonna tighten up the tension knob as well. We'll make the first cast and then we can dial it in. First cast. Perfect, that's all we need. Oh, we got a hit right off the bat. Looks like we're putting this session on pause. Starting to pour. That kind of put a wrench in things. Interesting. Jeez. I guess the good news is Ryan rigged is about 20 minutes away. This thing will probably be passed and we can catch some fish on this combo. So stick around. Well, folks, the rain has basically subsided. There's still some sprinkling going on. Ryan rigged has rolled up. He's going to be linked down below. Check us out, man. We did not coordinate this. We're wearing the same daggum banana yellow Guggen Squad uh, sun shirt. And it ain't even sunny anymore. We're like cold out here. We're shivering in 73 degree temperatures because it's been nothing but 105 degrees out here in Texas lately. Anyways. We got the rig. I'm going to try and catch something on this thing for you guys so we can finish this review. I want to talk a little bit more about it. Hopefully the winds and the rain calm down even more so we can do that. Let's try and catch some fish though. Holy sh**. Throw the top water, bro. That was crazy. How would you like to test out the new baitcaster down there? Water is murkier here, so I went with the black and blue. We're just throwing the chatter bait. A significant pond staple and confidence bait for many. Fantastic for the shallow waters you literally feel the bait working because it's got that blade on the front and it's like constantly shivering. And so uh, what I like to do is just keep my rod tip down and something like a 45 degree angle. So I'm ready to go for a little hook set if I get a fish, but uh, you feel the fluttering of the blade and the rod tip, it's always vibrating. So if you don't feel that vibration, you either have a fish that bit it and you probably know, or <laughs> you've kind of like gone through some grass or caught a twig or something and you can kind of give it a firm pull on the rod. Usually it'll, usually it'll free it. Uh, but I'm feeling that blade quiver, so we're all good. So far, casting's good. I'm thumbing it a little bit, even with the brakes like on max and that tension fairly tight. So what I usually like to do, let me turn my back to the wind so you can hear me, is I like to see where the bait drops slowly when you open the spool release, okay? And so it does, right? But given certain circumstances, like if it's really windy or if the bait is really light or heavy, there's, you know, the length of the rod will affect casting and all those different things. You may have to tighten it up even more. So what I recommend for beginners, and I mean truly beginners, okay, is you tighten up that tension knob until the bait like really doesn't even fall when you open up the spool by pressing that spool release, okay? So even maybe a little tighter, you see it's still dropping. There, it really doesn't fall. So this is great when learning, okay? Because what happens is whenever that bait hits the water, you need to put your thumb on the spool, otherwise you'll get a bird's nest, but you'll see it didn't just happen there. So if I were to loosen it up a little bit, and this is always sketchy doing this on camera, now it's dropping fast, right? I'm just gonna demonstrate like right here, kind of mellow. So when the bait hits the water, the spool is still gonna spin and you can see it starts almost getting that bird's nest. The, li the line is real loose on there, okay? So whenever the bait hits the water, that tighter, oh, I got a bass, I got a bass in the demo, yes, there's no way, I just dropped it right in front of me, bro, I was demonstrating the tension, I might be two and a half pounds, dude, I heard that play out, what just happened right there, son, oh my goodness, this thing is not looking healthy, he's looking so skinny, he needs to like have, eat a real fish, well, so you see, you can fish a chatterbait just by dead sticking it, which means not moving it, um, that just happened. This thing is so skinny. I really wish I had some like actual food to give it. Tips with Smith, okay? S tips with the Banana Bros, boys. I'm telling Go you. ahead and subscribe, I'm drop the you. likes because I mean, it's it's getting heavy out here. N nothing like that has ever happened to me on camera. Thank goodness I'm recording because I've had a lot of issues with that lately, but I'm gonna get this poor thing back in the water fast because I'm just kind of still shook. And uh, I think it is like very energy depleted based on the way it looks. Look, he's not even swimming away. 
Oh my gosh. That just happened, dude. It was great. That was, that was weird. weird. That was weird. Weird fish. Good stuff. <laughs> Quality. For more tips and tricks, make sure you subscribe to Weston Smith. <laughs> this is what I did. I went like this. I think I was right there. And I was like sh d looking at this. And then I just like go, I didn't even like set the hook. Like I just, I just tightened up because he literally ate it right there. The weirdest thing ever, dude. <laughs> that was great. I don't even know if they'll eat the chatterbait today. They might just want a worm on the bottom. <laughs> Got him. It's a good one on the Texas rig to close things out. Okay, so that's your demonstration on tension. So this thing's falling pretty fast. So I can get a really good cast with that, right? When you pair that with like looser brakes, but I'm not even gonna really fiddle with it because this bait's fairly heavy. I've got a long enough rod so I can really send it, okay? If it was a lighter bait, you might need to kind of play with it a little bit more, but nah. And then one thing else is, one thing as well is we're casting into the wind. And so I typically like to have the brakes higher in that instance. And every reel is gonna react differently. So I have this reel on max brakes, but I'm like still able to get a pretty incredibly lengthy cast with it. So let me demonstrate. I mean, max brakes, I would almost never take it off of them. One thing I would even dare to say is that the brakes in this are probably not as good a quality as far as the magnets. And so even on a 10 setting, it might not be near as dialed in as like your other reels, like on the halfway percentages, like, like you know, five out of 10 or three out of six, every reel is gonna have a different amount of steps on their braking system. But I would bet if you had like a, you know, any other bait caster out there, right? A little bit more high dollar. Even if you had the brakes on half, it might act like this one on full just because the quality is a little bit better. Now, with that being said, uh, the reel didn't act up after catching that fish right there. And that was like a two pounder. I know it didn't put up much of a fight, but the thing is you got to see how these reels react with the plastic components when they're those cheaper uh, setups. Because, you know, you look at this thing for 60 bucks, you factor in, you know, let's say the rod's worth half the value, the reel's worth half the value. I mean, like you're talking about like they build this reel for probably five, 10 bucks, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, it ends up being, you know, 25 for that, 25 for this. If you find it on sale, pretty much 50 bucks right there, right? Factor in a little bit for the line and the baits. It's like, how good can this thing really be? It's got to be all plastic inside of here and that's where was that you i just saw a fish jump we're gonna have to hold off on the tips i don't even remember what i was talking about i'm just trying to see if this cheap reel can catch something now so anyways uh with those you know more expensive reels you're gonna have more uh you're gonna have beefier internals right so your gears all that stuff it might be different metals and things of that nature instead of those plastic components longevity is what you're worried about here and if you get a big fish will it hold up or are you gonna just snap some things in there and then all of a sudden your handle doesn't work or your spool release doesn't work after you know a couple weeks and so those are the things we're going to be looking out for uh in today's first impressions what are you throwing now you switched it just give attention knob demonstration i hear that gets them fired up That's true. We're about to see how strong this 40 pound braid is because that's an $18 chatterbait. Oh, wow. Tell you what, I, uh, the quality of line on this reel, we just tested it folks. And that was phenomenal. Now let's see if we bent out our hook. Uh, it might be bent out a little bit, but I think it's still okay for a couple fish. Mm. I should really bend it back down, but we ain't got time for that. The chatterbait that costs as much as the rod and reel practically has bent out, but the rod and reel and line has held up. There's some lightning off in the distance. Hopefully these fish are fired up, feeling that pressure change. Uh, at least they probably were before the storm. Now afterwards, who knows? They might be chilling out, and that's why I got that hit when this bait was barely moving instead of swimming. Every day is different with those bass. You know, sometimes they're real active and they're chasing fish, and sometimes they just want that low and slow, that worm, the drop shot. So, a moving bait when it's overcast like this, and there's some storms in the vicinity, just seems like a smart move to start. Plus, Ryan's throwing a bottom bait now, so we kind of got bases loaded, and we can see which one ends up being the winner, and we can both switch up to whoever's catching the most fish. So, we got two folks working at it, seeing what they want. Oh, 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 oh. All right, y'all, the chatter bait has been fun, but I'm feeling some top water now. We've proven the point on the old moving baits. They seem to be hitting them, but I'd like to get one fired up and hit the surface and really explode on the top water. So we're breaking out the buzz bait. Oh my gosh, Ryan's got a good one on with like light line finesse rod he's using on his mystery tackle box slam. Y'all are gonna have to check that out. Oh, 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 don't lose it. Oh, got him. Okay. No. 
That was gonna be the ultimate test of the reel. That one was actually good. Like I know it was three, but I don't know if it was like four plus because it, it had it had a look. It had a look to it and it looks good. I want a good one on this reel. That's all we that's all we need. That's all, that's what we came here for. We want one good one to really test it. Oh got him, got him, got him, come on. He's got a little fight too. Oh yes. Bank flips on the 40 pound braid. <laughs> there we go. Solid one on the buzz bait. That's a nice little pond bass right there. Come on. Half ounce white buzz bait. Getting her done. So they're chasing a lot of small bait fish up here in the shallows. Shad in color, right? Just that lighter coloration. So they see that thing on the run and they probably think there's maybe another bass feeding on some of that bait fish, just kind of getting them all riled up. And so they run to the surface to attack that buzz bait, especially when you got overcast skies like this or around sunset. What a catch. Wow. You know, throwing it all afternoon, I gotta say, the feeling's pretty good. It doesn't seem like there's ever too many errors with that spool release. Seems like the handle's pretty smooth. You know, you get what you pay for, but I mean, it's pretty daggum smooth. As far as reliability, you saw the line test, essentially, we got on that tree stump out there. The bait caster itself feels a little large, but it is what it is. It's still fantastically pommelable, which is, uh, which is this right here. You see a lot of folks, when they first start with bait casters, they hold it like this that's how you know you're a rookie right there don't do that ladies and gents look it's gonna like shift on you and you won't have good leverage and you look awkward when you're fishing so you gotta you gotta work towards getting those first couple fingers up past this guy right here okay get your thumb on that reel now you've got more control looking like a professional ladies and gents looking like a pro out here i would say it is worth that 60 bucks i mean you're gonna get your money's worth and even if you do break it at least you ain't breaking some 400 dollars setup right expensive shimano that you drop on the concrete with the 100 150 200 rod that you snap in the door frame so anyways let's keep going ryan's got a tank right now texas rig so i'm gonna feed that bullet weight on there first i'm gonna tie my palomar knot to this nice little hammer hook there it is y'all blazing worm so i can just work this slowly on the bottom or i can even just kind of swim them quarter ounce weight this worm is just so versatile because it's a speed worm essentially okay that's what this is and this tail like kind of kicks back and forth side to side with the way it's uh, designed and built here so uh, you can swim this and catch fish you can work it on the bottom and catch fish you've got so much opportunity to even like work this on top of grass in different lakes and get top water hits i mean it's just uh, oftentimes if you're doing that you'd probably go weightless or you would go weightless but it's just got a, a ton of versatility for being a a worm right and we all know bass love the worms so this is the one time folks might be hesitant about going straight braid as well, just because it's not that invisible line, that clear fluorocarbon or monofilament. But um, like I said, I fished this way for the first year and a half. I was catching quite a few fish. Look at that kick. Oh my goodness. The way I see it, if they're kind of tailing this thing, I don't think they're going to catch on. I think they're just going to go after that kick. A lot of our hits have been reaction strikes today too. So, you know, maybe we're just kind of cruising the bank and one just decides to swim up shallow. It barely even takes a look at the thing. It just knows it's hungry. And if that's the case, we're going to catch them. Now, if I was just working this really slow, I might worry just a hair about the line. But it honestly might be how we have to switch it up to catch them over here on this side since it's so calm. So I might even just kind of work this a little bit slower and see if we can get a hit on the bottom. So when you're switching things up to a Texas rig, this is where I like the seven foot. You know, earlier we were talking about like a six and a half foot rod, right? Like a six, six. And that tip is just so flimsy. You barely get any feeling and feedback of like what you're working over on the bottom. Because with the Texas rig, you're actually working the bait back end with the rod, okay? So you, you, you raise that rod tip, you know, you pop it a couple times or you drag it by slowly raising the rod tip. You drag it along the bottom, you feel that cover, work over those twigs, those trees, those rocks, whatever you, you, whatever's down there, right? And so you're working it back with the rod. The only time I'm actually reeling with the Texas rig and why I'm giving those pointers out on a review of this rod and reel is just because I assume there's some newer fishermen here. Um, and so you work it back with the rod. The only time I'm reeling is as I lower that rod tip towards the water surface just to keep the line tight. Because if I if I pop it quite a few times and I kind of like lower the rod tip and I, and I you know didn't reel any of that line in, now that line is just sitting right here. There's a big bow in it and I don't have any feeling like directly to my worm unless I tighten up that slack. Now I can feel the worm so if I get bit 
I'm now gonna feel it. But if I had got bit after popping it a few times and I lower that rod tip without reeling, there's all this slack, you're not gonna feel it. That's why you always hear in fishing, you know, tight lines, tight lines, keep the line tight. Same thing when you're reeling the fish in and fighting it. You wanna keep that line tight. You give them a little slack and they can sometimes shake and they'll lose the hook if there's any slack oftentimes. And so those are things to think about. But um, yeah, a couple tips here as we close things out, looking for one more solid fish, hopefully on the blazing worm. But this thing has been just an absolute treat to fish for uh, 60 bucks. I mean, really cannot go wrong. Got him. It's a good one on the Texas rig to close things out. Oh boy, come on. Yep, that's a good one. Right along the bank with the blazing worm. Listen to that braid scream. Woo! Come on. Come on. Oh, that's the biggest one on this setup all day. Right up on the bank, just letting it sit. And like we said, those fish, they just kind of come up and feed. We knew that that buzz bait would work, but we're throwing them a little something different. We're slowing it down in the calm tonight. Blazing worm right at sunset. How crazy. That's what I'm talking about, man. Texas been 110 degrees every day. Finally got a couple days. Catch a nice little break with the weather. Get out here with the homie. The banana bros is back. <laughs> Here we go, use that little bait keeper. Toss them up there. That's how you close out a sunset sesh, y'all. 60 bucks, didn't even have to buy a line. Came with the whole deal. I just had to supply a couple baits there. If y'all are looking for a way to get some cheap baits shipped to your door every month, check out Ryan's video. He's throwing the Mystery Tackle Box, that subscription service where you get different baits every single month delivered to your door. We've been using them for years. Quite a few of our videos are doing mystery tackle box slams, but he's got a good one. A special treat for y'all here at the golf course, catching bigs on that thing. So, wow, what a day. And I think that's going to close things out for us, y'all. Reviewing the $40. First impressions, really, because you know that 90-day uh, review might actually have more insights as to how this thing holds up. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in the fishing content, would like to see more detailed breakdowns on some gear like this, especially budget stuff. I wanna do a lot more budget stuff. Uh, I feel like this is how more people get into fishing, of course, is the cheaper end of things. Um, and that's how it should be. You know, you don't, you, know, you don't need to just go out there and spend 100, 200, 300 bucks on some dream combo when you're just getting started, when you can have five combos loaded up with different line types for different techniques, different baits for the occasion. And I get out there and have some fun. So I really hope you enjoy this one. Uh, stick around for more. We got a lot headed y'all's way. The fishing's about to fire up. As soon as it cools down, we get some fall temps going on. But the summer fishing, we got a lot of tips for y'all who are having a little bit of trouble still catching in the heat. So anyways, subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Hey. Got him. It's a good one. On the text. And you can see it starts almost getting that bird's nest. The line, the line is real loose on there, okay? So whenever the bait hits the water, that tiger... Oh, I got a bass!